In this video, we'll solve some linear equations that involve multiple letters. In the first example, we've been given the equation a equals one-half b times h. We've been asked to solve the equation for b. To solve for b means I want to get b equals and everything else on the other side of the equation. So here I have a one-half multiplied to b and I have an h multiplied to b. I need to clear both the one-half and the h to the other side of the equation. First, we'll clear fractions. I'll multiply both sides of the equation by two. Now on the left I have two a. On the right, two times one-half cancels, leaving b times h. Again, my goal is to solve for b. To get b alone, I need to clear away the h. h is multiplied to b, so I divide both sides by h, which leaves b on the right side. And on the left, we now have the quantity 2a divided by h. So we've now solved for b. b equals 2a over h. In the next problem, we have the volume of a, of a sphere. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We've been asked to solve for pi. Again, to solve for pi means I want to have pi equals and everything else on the other side. I'll first clear fractions. I multiply both sides by 3 over 4. This clears away the fraction on the right, leaving pi r cubed. And on the left, I have 3v divided by 4. To solve for pi means I need to get pi equals. So I need to get the r cubed away from pi. That means I'm going to divide both sides by r cubed. Since I already have a fraction on the left side, I'm going to go ahead and think about dividing by r cubed as the same thing as multiplying by 1 over r cubed. Remember, division by r cubed is the same as multiplying by 1 over r cubed. Now on the right side, I'm left with pi. But on the left side, I can clearly see that I have a 3v in the numerator and a r cubed and a 4 in the denominator. In other words, we would usually write this as 3v over 4r cubed. Pi is equal to 3v over 4r cubed. If 2x plus 3y equals 5, and we want to solve for y, I want to get y equals and everything else on the other side. Remember your rules when solving linear equations. You should do your additions and subtractions first, and your final step should be your multiplication or division to isolate the variable. So in this case, I see that the 2x is added, and the 3 is multiplied to the y. So I want to first do my additions and subtractions. So I will first subtract 2x on both sides. This will cancel 2x on the left, leaving 3y on the left. On the right, I have negative 2x plus 5. Now to isolate y, I need to divide the entire left side by 3 and the entire right side by 3. Be careful right here. It's very common for students to divide only one piece of a side by 3. For example, I often see students only divide, say, the negative 2 by 3, or only divide the 5 by 3. But everything on the right side of the equation needs to be divided by 3. Now on the left side, the 3 cancels, leaving y. And on the right side, I have the entire quantity, negative 2x plus 5, all divided by 3. I'm going to divide that 3 into the first term, leaving negative 2 thirds x. And I'm going to divide that 3 into the second term, leaving 5 thirds. So the 3 has divided into the negative 2, and the 3 has divided into the 5. So now we see that y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds. In the final example, we're again given a linear equation where we're asked to solve for y. 
to isolate y. Again, we do our additions and subtractions first. So I'm going to subtract away the 5x. Now on the left side, I have negative 4y. On the right side, I have negative 5x plus 20. I want to isolate y, so I divide the entire left side by negative 4, and I divide the entire right side by negative 4. Again, remembering everything needs to be divided by negative 4, the negative 5x and the 20. Now on the left side, we're left with y, and on the right side, I'm going to divide negative 5 by negative 4, which leaves 5 fourths. And I'm going to divide positive 20 by negative 4, which leaves minus 5. So now we have that y is equal to 5 fourths x 